So after 100,000 miles, how dirty would you expect the intake manifold to be? Well, let me show you. So this is after 100,000 miles, and the main cause of this is the EGR valve. So I've got the whole front end open, and I thought, you know what, let me delete it. The whole point of the EGR valve is it makes your engine a bit more cleaner, and what it takes is the fumes that are coming out of your engine is sending it right back in. But what happens over time is it starts blocking the intake manifold, and it reduces performance, and it causes all kinds of issues, and if it's not done in time, it will cause your engine to just, you know, break down. So what I'll be doing in this video is I'll be removing it, and I'll be filling in the gaps that's there with this kit. You can buy it from eBay, it's like 15 pounds. And yeah, so by removing the EGR valve, hopefully my engine lasts longer, I should have more power, and I won't get this buildup of sort of happening again. So let's get on with the video. So here's the kit, it comes with two screws, two plugs for the hoses, and then two circly things that you block the exhaust from. All right, so first step is remove the battery. Again, I always remove the battery when I'm working with a car. You never know what you can trigger. So disconnect the negative port and put it to the side. Next, we need to unscrew all the million 10 millimeter screws under the car to remove the plastic cover. There's quite a lot. As you're doing this, just make sure you don't lose any screws. I've lost quite a few. A lot of these are actually rusty, so I'm putting them in vinegar so they can um, the rest can go away. So now that the plastic cover is removed, the next step is you want to go in the front. I've already moved all the plastic bits in the front of the car. I forgot to record it, so apologies, but it's just a couple of hex bolts. Um, it should be very straightforward to remove. Next, remove the radiator, get rid of that plug. And there's one screw holding it in place. It's a T20, I believe. So as you remove the screw, you can see here I'm trying to lift it up, but it's not coming up. And the reason for that is there is something uh, attached in the bottom. So to get to that, the first thing you need to do is remove these two little clips. I can't remember what they were, but I think they were maybe 11 mils, 10 mils, can't remember. Once these clips go off, the next thing you can do is this plastic bit comes off as well. And that uncovers the radiators and everything underneath. Once that's removed, next you're going to see this little T20 screw. Once you remove that screw, you should be able to then remove the radiator. See now, I can remove the radiator, slowly pull that out. And that's going to give us enough room to now work on the valve. Cool. So after removing a couple of hoses, because I'm actually working on the whole front end, and here's me being an idiot, trying to shove a screwdriver in, not realizing there's two bolts underneath. Anyways, I'm trying to replace a lot of bits here, so you probably won't have as much clearance as me. But the next piece is there's a little hose over there. It's a flathead that you can just unscrew, and then you remove it. So one of the caps is going to go inside there. It'll be tough to pull out, so I've got this tool. So here's the EGR valve, next piece is there's two bolts in there, I think they're T30s, I can't remember what it was, maybe T40, there's two screws that you need to remove, they're a bit tight so, and they're probably going to be hard to see. Before doing that I had to also remove a part of the air intake, there's a little plastic bit there that I removed. Once these two are removed, there's just one more bolt, as you can see there, that's holding in the EGR valve from the left-hand side. Which I had to get rid of. Once that's done, that's now loose on one side. Now the other side is a H7. can't remember, it's a hex or allen key bolt. Those need removing as well. And then the EGR valve will be loose. Now one thing I forgot to show you in the video is on the other end, near the intake manifold, you have to get another flathead and unscrew the ring. That will then completely allow you to get rid of the EGR valve. Apologies, I forgot to show that in this video, but you'll see it when I fit the cap to seal the exhaust. Also forgot to mention, to get to those head screws, you have to remove a little black thing on top, which is a socket. Alright, there you are. 
This is the EGR valve, all removed. You can probably resell this to be honest. Um, that's what I'm going to try and do. Um, it is working, but again, it causes issues. So next, we're now going to put the caps. So this is the part I was talking about. So you just put the cap in there and then you start tightening it. And that will block any air or exhaust from going out. Now remember, after doing this, you will be getting some sort of error on the dash. You can code it out. I don't know how to do that. If I figure it out, then I will let you know. And then you have the other cap on the other side. So they give you a little metal part that you screw in. You screw it in here, as you can see. That will stop all the exhaust from going out from there. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Cool. So I'm doing a lot of work in this car right now. So I can't show you how I've put work with the caps, but this is where they would fit. Whatever those hoses that you removed, one of them opens to allow you to get cooling out. The other one isn't. You literally put those in the hoses and you're done. Look out for the next video where I'm cleaning the intake manifold and changing the glow plugs.